music from the choir. It's, you may be seated that way. Uh, it's just inspiring. I was listening to that song, and they were saying that there's a leak in this old building. He will fix it. Yes, he will. Mm. And I also brought to my mind, I used to sing on a quartet group, and we used to sing that song, Trouble in My Way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime, right. but I know that Jesus will fix it. Yes. Trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime. Trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime. If you're lost, Jesus is a way maker. Amen. And if you got change, Jesus is a chain breaker. Yes, Jesus is Jesus. Yes. He is all in all. Now, thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to preach. And I thank God for allowing me the opportunity. And I thank him for bringing me here and giving me the opportunity to preach at First Baptist Church. And I thank you all for listening. I, I just have a passion for that. Uh, I also love to teach. So if you don't mind, <clears throat> this morning, if I just teach a little bit, and if the Holy Spirit allow me, I'll preach a little bit as well. Amen. Amen. That scripture that uh, Deacon Rankin, uh, that Deacon Bailey read, I'm so used to Deacon Rankin reading the scripture. <laughs> there is a reason for reading the uh, Old Testament and Leviticus and uh, the New Testament in Hebrew. In the Old Testament and Leviticus, I'm just going to reread that real briefly and uh, just to keep us on track with that. In verse 20, uh, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 20 says, When he had made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat, verse 21, and Aaron shall lay both hands, both his hands upon the head of the goat, and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sin, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man unto the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Let's pray. Father, we've come now at this time, O oh God, to open up your word, Lord, and just to glean from your truth today, that real truth, Lord, that will help us, that will sink deep down into our hearts, our souls, and our minds, Lord, that we will not forget the price that was paid for our redemption, Lord. Just pray now that your Holy Spirit would be the teacher, Lord, just use this clay vessel to bring forth the word of God. Lord, I pray that our decrease, the Lord Jesus Christ, would increase, Lord, that they would not see me, but that they would see you through the pages of these scriptures, Lord. Yes. That you would have your way, that you would be glorified, the name of Jesus Christ would be exalted, that your sins might be edified today, Lord. We just give you the praise and honor and glory. Do your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the reason that um, I said I wanted, wanted to do a little teaching first is because sometimes we are under the impression that <clears throat> the things that we have been told over the years, <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe our grandparents told us, maybe our parents told us, or maybe you just heard them passing by. Go ahead. But you need to know what the word of God said. Yeah. You know, sometimes when people they buy like they buy an insurance policy or they buy an extended contract on a piece of equipment or something like that, and you don't I mean, you hear what the salesman or whatever they tell you. And you don't, and you read the big print, but you don't take the time to read the fine print. Amen. So when there's a time for a need for that insurance policy or that, or that, that extended warranty on the contract or something, <laughs> you haven't read the fine print, and then you go present it to the purchaser or the buyer and something say, well, I claim this, and they tell you, well, I'm sorry, you're not covered. All right. Amen. We know that happened here not long ago, just about something like that. Amen. Somebody said something, but it wasn't covered. So you need to know what the Word of God says, so you know what's in it. So when you read it, we need to be able to understand what actually it says. And if you don't understand, 
Find somebody to help you to understand it. Don't assume on God's word is what I'm trying to say. God's word is the truth. And Psalm 119.89 uh, says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Yes, so nothing is going to change about God's word. It's there, it's true, and it will last forever. Amen. So, with that, uh, <clears throat> it was kind of difficult. I don't know if anybody else has this problem or not when they're preparing a message. But a lot of times, I, I, I just can't sleep in the night before. Because I be preaching different sermons all night long in my mind. Oh, what is this? Which one am I going to stand before the congregation and tell this morning? And then finally, you rest when you say, Holy Spirit, have your way. And then you find that peace and say, what it is, Lord, it's not from me, it's from you. So I hope you get that this morning. Is that, um, but I want to ask you a question this morning. How much do you really appreciate the benefits of the new covenant. Uh -huh. Now I want you to hold that thought right there for a minute. The new covenant, okay? In the Old Testament, we read in Leviticus that Aaron, the high priest, every year he had to take two goats uh -huh. and bring them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle. Yeah. Come on. And they had to kill one for a sin offering for the people of Israel, their sins and their transgressions. But the other one, they would let go alive. Okay. And then Aaron would place his hand, both hands, on the head of the goat and confess the sins and the transgressions and the iniquities of the children of Israel over this goat. And then he would send it off into the wilderness. And as Deacon Bailey said, that goat became a scapegoat. Jesus Christ became our scapegoat, if you will. Okay, we're going to see that over in the book of Hebrews. As we get there. What God has done for us, sisters and brothers, it's amazing. He sent his beloved son to die for our sins. Yeah. When Jesus Christ, the Son of God, suffered for us, it was not easy. All right. I think we sometimes we take for granted that um, he was God, he could bear it, there was no problem. Uh -huh. But the Bible tells me in Luke chapter 22 and verse 42. Jesus saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Oh, yes. Yes. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Yes, sir. <clears throat> In his humanity, there seemed to have been some stress. But God was going to be obedient to his father, and he was going to carry out the father's will. Well. And the Bible also tells us in Luke 22, 44, it says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were drops of blood falling down upon the ground. That's stress. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ took the punishment for us to count. Go ahead. But he didn't stop there. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a glance of the uh, old covenant of Moses' law that was, that was read in the Leviticus chapter 16, verse 20 through 22. And I want to take that this morning and contrast it with the New Testament, the new covenant, okay? In the old testament, under the Mosaic law, the high priest had to, once a year, make this sacrifice. But the problem with that is the high priest himself had sinned. So he had to first atone for his sin yeah. and then atone for the other people's sin. Mm -hmm. And he had to do it every year. But Jesus Christ, when he came, he made that sacrifice once for all. You don't have to kill no more animals and bring them to God as a sacrifice. Amen. The Lamb, John said in John 1, I mean, yeah, John 1 29. Behold, he said, the next day John sees Jesus come and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. Now the difference is, when the uh, priest laid both hands on the head of this scapegoat, the goat carried the supposedly your sins off into the wilderness. All right. Carried them off. But when Jesus came, it don't say he carried away your sin. The Bible says he takes away your sin. Yes, now there's a difference. 
He didn't care them all that they might be come back again. He took them away forever. Yes, all right. Isn't that good news this yeah. morning? I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that I'm under the new covenant. Yeah. How much do you appreciate the benefits of the new covenant? Yes. Let me just go on a little bit further and tell you something about benefits, okay? As we look at a glance in the Old Testament, um, we know that the Old Testament, we call it, let me use this big word, then I explain it, typology. Okay. Typology is no more than a type or a foreshadow of things that was going to come. Okay. In the Old Testament, if you don't understand the New Testament, you would not understand the Old Testament. Right. Because the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Yeah. So the, the things in the Old Testament are just a foreshadow of the things in the New Testament that Jesus was going to bring about when he came on the scene. Amen? Come on. The sense. writer of Hebrews said that... Sense. Well, let me just go over to Hebrews while we're here. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 8. And what I, what I would like to do is uh, not, not uh, I, well, let me just read it. Now, what I'm going to do is read 13 verses, but I'm going to read them real quick, but today we're going to focus on verse 10 through 13. Is that all right? Yeah. I'm not going to ask you to stand again, but if you will, turn into your Bible, Hebrews chapter 8, and just follow along and listen, if you will. And the God, the, the word of God reads, uh, Now the things which he has spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heaven, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched, not, and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, whereof, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was of minus of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. Right. For see, said he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown thee in the mount. Amen. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Amen. A better covenant, better promises. Come on. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then it should then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. Yeah. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother. Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to the unrighteous, to their unrighteous, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Right. And then he said, A new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So under the new covenant. <clears throat> There is no, first of all, there are four points I wanted to make this morning. Thank you. Okay. And the first one, if you would notice, in verse 1 it says, Now the things which he have spoken, this is the Son. We have such a high priest. We have a high priest was in and when he went into the tabernacle, he is seated in a tabernacle that's not made by hand. Right. Man didn't make it. He is seated at the right hand of God, throne of God, in a tabernacle that wasn't made by man. Right. Jesus Christ will never 
die again. He died once for us, and that was enough. Right. The writer of Hebrews said that the old covenant was weak and useless, but the new covenant we are able to be saved to the uttermost. I just want you to know this morning that the, the, under the law, under the old covenant, the law could not sanctify. Amen. The law could not justify. The law could not save you. The law was a burden for you, actually. The law was a schoolmaster to point us to Christ. That's all the law was. The reason that God instituted the law was for the hard heartness of the children of Israel. That he wanted to show them how to live right and how far they fall short of living up to his standards. Right. The same thing with you and I. I'm so glad today that I don't even have to try to keep the law. Because I know I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And God just wanted to show the children of Israel, here is my standard, here where you are. Uh -huh. Okay. So God knew that he knows what we need. He's that kind of a God. And he know, He knew that we needed something better. Yes, sir. And he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to establish a new covenant built on better promises. Aren't you glad this morning that you have a new covenant? You have a high priest that builds on better promises, and Jesus is never to die again. All right. And he takes away your sin. That's good news, folks. I don't know where you are. How much do you appreciate the benefit of the new covenant? That's the question. Maybe you hadn't really thought about it. And like the pastor said, and we said about many of you just taking things for granted. Do you know what Jesus did? Do you know what you have? Let's go over just a little bit further ahead, <laughs> as these uh, points unfold this morning. Okay. Right out the Hebrew said that the old covenant was weak, so therefore we need something better. Mm -hmm. Since the old covenant couldn't save God, wanted to save his people, so he had to do something. He didn't have to do, but he did. <laughs> for you and me, amen. Fishy. Fishy. Under the old covenant, people had to take a sacrifice into the temple every time they broke God's command. But under the new covenant, Jesus Christ sacrificed himself on the cross so that we would never have to bring another animal sacrifice Go ahead. to God. That's not to say that we don't sin. Amen. It simply means that when God looks at you now, he no longer sees your sin. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Yeah, Amen. Amen. And that is, that's, that's new because if he looked at me and saw who I was or am, Apart from Jesus Christ, he would probably turn his head and move out. And you too. I'm not the only one that can do it. Right. If Jesus Christ did not save you, you would look like a filthy rag to God. I, I, just in case you didn't know that, look at Isaiah. I just wanted to just let you go this morning. You're not so beautiful in the sight of God until you belong to him through his son, Jesus Christ. And then you are beautiful in his sight because the blood of Jesus has washed away your sins and now you are covered under that blood. And the righteousness of Christ has been imputed to your account. Amen. Isn't that good news? Something that you could not do and Jesus did not owe he did for you. All right. I don't know about you this morning, but I, every time I think about what the Lord did for me, sometimes it makes me want to shout. Like he picked me up and turned me around. Planted my feet on solid ground. I don't know about you this morning, but I just got joy in my heart. Because when I think about the Lord, how good he's been to me, all I can say is hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good to me. And I'm just so happy and so, so joyful this morning. But when I look at the benefits of that new covenant, I just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And as the Bible talks about the scapegoat, we talked about that. <laughs> Jesus became our scapegoat. All of our sins, our iniquity, our transgression, your lying, your stealing, your cheating, all was placed on Jesus Christ yeah. as a scapegoat. And he took them right on the Calvary. Yes, sir. And he nailed them to the cross. Amen. Amen. Left Amen. them there. Yes. When he left there, you and I were clean. Ah. We don't have no more burden, no more sin to, to, to be dominant over us. We're not, under, we're not slaves to sin anymore. We're not under the bondage of sin. We will have liberty in Christ today. Aren't you glad about that? Can I get a hand this We have liberty. We have been set free by the blood of Jesus. Well, what a wonderful message that is this morning. And Aaron, the priest, would lay his hands on the head just poor goat. If I want to put it that way, he had to take, he had to take the sin 
of the people of Israel. Yes, sir. Now, which one was better off? The skin, the one that was killed for the sins of the people, or the one that had to carry all of the heavy burdens off into an right. uh, inhabited right. land? I'm not going to ask you which one you would rather have been, because I don't think you have a choice in that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I'm so glad that Jesus Christ, even though it cost him much stress, no. he went on to take care of man's human kind condition, sin condition. Jesus became the safe, the scapegoat that took away his sin. He didn't care if he took them away forever. If you would turn in your Bible, Hebrews chapter 8, where you are now, and just look at verses 13. Uh, as I read, I, uh, I just read for you the 13 verse. I just want you to be reminded this morning the benefits that the Hebrew writer gives us <coughs> is about being in the kind of relationship that he described, the kind of relationship with God that he described, the Hebrew writer. The main focus of the passage is going to be Hebrew verses 10 through 12 as I read them into your hearing. Verse 10 in chapter 8 of Hebrews says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be my people. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting, in this passage of scripture, especially uh, 10 to 13, this was taken, my, taken from Jeremiah chapter 31, I believe it's verse 31. 600 years before Christ was born on the earth. Jeff, Jeremiah prophesied this. Yeah. And it come true. I just was telling you that the Old Testament is a shadow of the things to come in the New Testament. Just a foreshadow of things to come. Jesus fulfilled that mm. when he came. Yeah. Okay. And verse 11 say, And they shall And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. And verse 12 says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now, I'm going to go back on that in just a minute, especially that one. But before we get there, I know that the way I started this off, you're going to think that, what's Minister Barry talking about? He's all over the place this morning. That's okay if you think that. But well, just hold on a little while. Okay. We're, going to, we're going to get there. Amen. Hold on. Now, I think you will better understand what I mean by the, the benefits of the new covenant after I finish explaining this. I just want to remind you this morning that the benefits of the new covenant is everlasting. They don't fade away. They are for eternity. Now the first point that the writer makes in here is in verse 1 he says we have a high priest. Yeah. There were times when you, you would have to go to in the Old Testament, you would have to go through, well, the priest was the only one who could go into the Holy of Holies. That's it. Okay. <laughs> he, you would have to stand out and he'd go in for you and make atonement. But now, we don't need nobody to intercede on our behalf to get into the Holy of Holies. Why? Because Jesus is the high priest. And when he hung Calvary's cross, and when he gave up the ghost, the Bible tells me that the veil of the temple ran in two. Yeah. Wide open. Now the door is open that every child of God can walk right into the presence of God without having to have a priest to intercede. Well, we have a priest. The high priest, Jesus Christ. He already did. Hallelujah. Amen. The priest that will live forever, and is, we don't have to worry about him. Uh, Every year making sacrifice for us. He did it once. Jesus is perfect. 
And what he does is perfect. Yeah. And he made the perfect sacrifice because he was a perfect lamb slain before the foundation of the yeah. world. Perfect without spot or wrinkle. Amen. And one day he's going to present us to himself in that condition. Amen. So we have something to look forward to. The trials and tribulations that we are facing down here on this earth is nothing more than just God pruning us for a better life. Yes, and we come under that better covenant. As I read, the first thing he said, Jesus is our high priest. And in the following verses, the, he, uh, the writer of Hebrews sums it all up like this. He said, the Old Testament revolved around Jesus Christ. Hmm. He says in verse 4 and 5, For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Jesus didn't offer no gift according to the law. Amen. As they, in verse 5 it said, Who served unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. He says, See, said he, thou, uh, that thou makest all things according to the pattern to show thee in the mountain. When God gave the Israelites, gave Moses the stone of tabernacle with the Ten Commandments on it, uh, it's possible that Moses could have lost the tablet. It's possible that the tablet could have got broken. It's possible that the writer could have faded off the tablet. But when God writes the laws on your heart and on your mind and in your spirit, they can't get broken, they can't get lost, and you can't get rid of them. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has sealed you and sealed them laws in you until the day of promise. Amen. Now you can be disobedient, disobey them, that don't mean that they go away. They are there. That's why God did it. I'm going to write them in your mind, on your heart, yeah. and they will be with you for eternity. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know about you this morning, but that's one of the benefits that I'm glad about this morning. Amen. That I don't have to worry about where's the tablet this morning. Do I, do I need to look up and take commandments on the tablet? No, all I have to do is fall on my knees yeah. and be reminded, Lord, the word is in my heart, the thought is in my mind, and it's in your word. All I have to do is just pick up my Bible, if I will, Amen. and it should. Amen. I don't know about you this morning. Some brand new Bibles have dust all over. Amen. Some old Bibles have dust all over. Amen. What about your Bible? Right, now, I just want to ask you this morning, not only have you been reading, do you understand what you read? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? That the foreshadowed things of the Old Testament was coming new uh, in, the, in the New Testament. Probably most of you know that. Probably a lot of you have been in church for a long time. You've heard uh -huh. that. But did you really know that? See, the Bible is showing us this morning that what the law could not do, God sent his son to do it. Yes, sir. The law couldn't save you. The law was a curse to you. Well, you if you don't believe me, read the Bible. Go ahead. The law was a curse. It was a yoke around your neck. But Jesus Christ came and did away with all of that. Yes, sir. A new, a better Amen. covenant made on better promise yes, with a high priest that will never die again. Amen. And don't fade away. Amen. I'm talking about now The entire Bible revolves around the finished work of Christ at Calvary's cross. Since the Bible is God's guide that teaches us how to live out the human experience through his son, shouldn't our lives revolve around the cross right. of Christ? Yeah. Shouldn't the church revolve around the cross of Christ? I'm not talking about that gold cross you hang around your neck or that silver cross you hang around your neck or you put in your car, you put on your dough. I'm talking about that old rugged cross on yeah. Calvary. Where Jesus hung and died for you and me. We gave up the ghost on that old cross. Man. He, paid, he, he, uh, he, he hung on that cross and gave up his life to pay a sin debt for you and me. A debt that he did not owe and we could not pay. All right. Thank God Amen. that he took that burden for us. Thank you, Lord. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a Christmas thing but he washed 
It's white as snow. Yes, sir. It had good news this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Our entire focus should be on Christ and proclaiming the message of the cross. Can I get a witness this morning? Go ahead, what I'm talking about this morning, God don't ask us to do much. He don't give us much to do. But listen for a minute. If Jesus was willing to suffer all, and some of you know the story in Isaiah, how they beat him where, where they couldn't even recognize him. Right. They beat him with the nine cattails or whatever, with lead in and all that stuff, and ripped his flesh. You know that. Oh, you heard that. How he suffered for you and me, and he didn't quit. There are times he might have felt like it in the human flesh. Father, if it's possible, yeah. let this cup pass before me. But not my will, that will be done. Yeah. Now when the Lord asks you to do something, is that what you tell him? Lord, take this cup from me. But not your will be done. You say, I want my will done. Why do you say that, Minister? <clears throat> because he asked you and me to go make disciples. Uh -huh. That's all he asked us. He commanded us. All right. How many disciples have you gone out and made? For the Lord. Come on. I know I'm stepping on some toes this morning, and that's all right, you know, because of the word of God, Matthew 28 19, say, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, right? Yeah. It's not coming from Minister Barry, it's coming from the word of God. Great. But if you start to think about all that the Lord has done for you, mm. can't you do that little bit for him? Amen. Can't you do that little bit for him? What is the problem that we can? I know I'm meddling, Come on. and that's okay. It's not me, the Holy Spirit meddling. Because God wants us to do something we're not doing. God wants to do something specific and something special and something something different here. See, we're so used. Sometimes we get so caught up in traditionalism that we can't think outside the box. We say, well, this is what we always did. So what? It's always been wrong. How about doing it God's way? And get on the right road. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. So what I'm saying this morning is that if things aren't going the way that God wants them to go according to the lesson this morning, order, things are going to be out of order. Yes. And you wonder why churches are dying. People are going to hell. Churches are empty. Why? Because you are not doing what God commanded you to do. Go ahead, sir. Jesus paid it all. There is nothing you could pay. There is nothing you could do. There is nothing you are worthy of doing. There is nothing that you have that God wants that could satisfy him but obedience all to right. his son. That's all he asked you. All right. Obedience to what Jesus Christ has done for you. If you want to merit the benefits of the new covenant, then you must understand who Jesus is. You must understand what your relationship with him is. Yes, and you must understand what he wants you to do. Now, I want you to understand one thing, though. It is not you who is doing this. Jesus, God initiated it. Jesus draws you and the Holy Spirit seals you. Amen. So it is him. He said, good work he has started in you. Amen. He has started in you. He will bring it to completion. Yes, sir. It is nothing you are doing and nothing you can do but be obedient. Surrender to God. Yes, Surrender all to the Lord. And uh, he will do the rest. Yes, Amen. So we have an opportunity to enjoy the benefits of the covenant. The new covenant. He said, the second one he said, not only do we have a high priest, he said, I will write the law on your heart. <laughs> That's a promise. And a benefit. Okay. And not only that, he said, I will be your God and you will be my people. Now, he didn't ask you if you wanted to. He said, I will be your God, and you will be my people. Amen. That's a blessing, and that's a benefit, and that's a promise. And God will go back on his promises. What he said is true. And he said, let's look at verse 12. He said, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins, and their iniquities will I remember no more. <clears throat> and that struck me because it says in Psalm 103, verse 12, it says, 
as far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your sin. Now what I want you to think about this morning is this. When God writes something, he knows what he's writing. And he has a reason for it. He knows the reason for it. Why did he say in the Bible, as far as, your sin, as far as the north is from the south, I will remove your sins away from you? Have you thought about that? He said, as far as the east is from the west. Well, let me tell you why. If you go north as far as you can go, eventually you will start back going south. But if you go east as far as you can go, you will never come back west. Amen. Think about that. North will go south, but east will never connect with west. What am I saying to you this morning? I'm saying that when God, when Jesus removed your sins from you, they have been removed so far that you need not ever go back in that consent that you were in before he delivered you. Amen. Can I get a witness? Somebody know what I'm talking about. Aren't you glad this morning that you can enjoy that kind of with No, 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 I'm glad that I'm set free. I have liberty in Jesus. Yes, sir. Thank you. All he asks you to do is just be obedient. Amen. Yes. And he says in verse 12, he said, I will be merciful unto the undead and righteous, and their sins and their victories I will remember no more. Okay. Now, one of God's attributes is omniscience. Omniscience means that he's all known. So, when he said that sins, I will remember no more. Do you think that God don't know about your sins? Mm. Mm. Wow. When we forgive somebody, we tell them, I forgive you, but I won't forget. <laughs> Have you really forgiven me? Mm. God said their sins and their iniquities, I will remember no more. If he's all wise and all knowing and he can't remember your sin, guess why? Because <laughs> he choose not to. Ah. Amen. He don't want to remember your sin. Once his son took care of him, it's done. Yes. That don't mean you're not going to still sin, but he says in John 1, 9, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Yeah. What a promise we have in the Lord, I'll tell you. Uh, there is nothing like him. No one like him. Nobody can substitute for him. Nobody can do the things he did. I don't know about you this morning, but See, I've been in some terrible situations. I've been in some scary situations. I've been in some dangerous situations. But I can stand here this morning as a living testimony and tell you that God has been a shelter for me in the storm. Right? Right, God has been a bridge for me over the storm. Right? God has been the bread of life for me. He's been living water for me. I don't know about you this morning, but I just say, Lord, I thank you. But when I was down, you picked me up and turned me around. When my mind was confused, the Lord straightened it out. When I had a broken heart, the Lord healed it. When my mind was all tripped up, the Lord straightened it out. So I can go to the Word of God and find my way in the Word of God. What about you this morning? Do you know where to go when you're in trouble on your side? Go to the Word of God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except by the Son. Now, if you, if you know another way that Satan had you so confused, so blind, so tricked, that you think you can get to the Lord by except through His Son, you need to read the Bible. And if you don't read it and understand that, you need to come to a preacher or a pastor or somebody to help you understand there's only one way. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As I bring this message to a close this morning, I didn't mean to keep you so long, but I hope you will understand that you have some great benefits under the new covenant that the people of the old covenant did not have. Right. And there's a reason for it. Well, you might ask the question, well, if the people of the old covenant didn't have those benefits, how did they get saved? They got saved through their faith in the Messiah that they heard about. Uh -huh. Woo! You get it saved in the Messiah that has already come that you know about. All right. And we still deny him. I'm not talking about you saints out here today. I'm talking about people in general. Still deny that the Savior has come and in Him there is salvation. Yes, sir. No other but the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to say this morning as, uh, as I bring it to a close. Normally a, gospel, a Baptist preacher say this three times before he close. Before I close the message this morning. Before I close the message this morning. Before I close the message. And then he brings it to a close. You right? 
Yes, no. But I'm going to close a little bit earlier today. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Now, Hebrews 13, 20 through 21 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead the Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant,